Today we're going to talk all about how to write a book to accompany your planner business. How can a book help you? What should you write about? And how do you get published? Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday and I do unboxings on Saturday. Today we're going to talk about how becoming an author and publishing a book can really help complement your brand, accentuate your brand, and also help you to connect with your audience on a deeper level. So we're going to go through four different things today. First I'm going to go through an example of the books that I have here. The second thing we're going to go to do is we're going to talk about what should you write about third we're going to talk about how to publish your book you can do traditional you can do self-publishing and as you know i am a best-selling amazon author so i will talk you all through that different process and last we'll talk about how to market and position this so that it does complement your current planner brand so let's just jump into the first one, which is walking you through the examples I have here. And this is not an exhaustive list, um, but I wanted to start out with Christy Dickerson from Start Planner, and she has self-published her own book. You can only purchase this on her website, and it was pretty pricey at $20 because it's really thin. Um, now, it must have been expensive to make because it does have your traditional planner ribbon, and I call this book sort of a hybrid between a traditional book and a planner book because what she's tried to do with the ribbon and the colors is she's also given you space to write write in. Now I would say this is a huge no-no when you are writing a book because at this price point, even though it is less expensive than the planner, you just for whatever reason in your mind, consumers don't like writing in books. And especially this book because it's small, it's almost like a coffee table book. You might have people picking up this book. You maybe don't want to hide it on your shelf. Um, it also doesn't lay flat, so it's very difficult to write in. Um, but I think she did an excellent job with the packaging and the presentation and with the material is all about being a mom and running your household. Now, same thing with the next two books. These are all books about being a mom. Um, that's like 90 percent of what they talk about they talk about c-sections they talk about chores they talk about allowances um and you know it's interesting for me to read because i'm a single girl with no kids uh but laura casey from power sheets and she has her business is called cultivate what matters this has a really strong religious undertone now emily lee's books do not have as strong of a religious undertone however what's interesting is they were both traditionally published by a religious imprint of HarperCollins. Now, this these books by Laura Casey are what I would call just a traditional regular book. So she has talked about um, all of her experiences and she has some biblical quotes in here, but this is what you would think of as a book. It's literally just text. And I don't mean just text, like it's not impressive, but does not try to become a hybrid with a planner book, which is what Emily Lee has done. So both of these books are kind of hybrids and I don't know why it's not sticking out, but it has a ribbon just like this one, as well as what Christy Dickerson does is this one has spaces for you to write in. Now, the difference between this and the Christy Dickerson one is this one has a lot of pictures of Emily and her children and her house. So uh, you get a really great sort of intimate insight side look at what her life is like and what it's about and what she does every day. So this, I think, helps people to connect with Emily on a deeper level. And even though her business is called The Simplified Planner, it is also used synonymously with the term Emily Lee Planners. Now, what should you write about? So all of these women have decided to write about being a mom and running that household and how that has helped them become organized. Laura has thrown a lot in there about her faith and connection with God. And I think, you know, when you think about what to write about, you should first pick a theme. So the theme of all of these is being a mom. And, you know, if I obviously am not a mom, so I wouldn't write about that. My themes could be, I could be, talk about being single and living in the city. I could talk about dating. I could talk about uh, careers in corporate America. I could talk about finances, right? So these are personal experiences that I have that I think others could benefit from, from learning from my story. Now, we're just going to use one example and take that kind of through the next two. So I've paid off $190,000 in debt. That was credit card debt, it was medical debt, it was student loan debt, it was just a bunch of 
debt. And so I was able to pay that off by myself within seven years because again, I'm single, never married with no kids. And that to me, if I was going to write that book, I would put it into what's typically called a three act structure. So you have a beginning, a middle, an end. Whether it is fiction or it is nonfiction, that is usually the natural flow of a book. So in my example, my first would, section would probably just be about how I got myself into financial debt in the first place. The second would be about the middle on how, things that I changed in order to start paying down that debt. And the third would be how to maintain being debt free after having paid everything down. Now, you can pick a totally different theme, but just remember, make sure it's something authentic, right? So like if I tried to be a Laura Casey or an Emily Lee and talk about what I think women should do with their children and running their household and you know being a better mom, it would sound really hokey and possibly, and hopefully, I should say hopefully, no one would buy it, because I don't have any experience with that and I don't really know. So it's not, it's, uh, the other thing too is it's not going to, you're not gonna have any vignettes or personal stories. And I think that's really important when you are writing your book for your planner business so that people can connect with you on a deeper level and really help to under, hope to understand you. And if you're writing about other people's experiences or things that you just imagine, they're not going to be able to do that. So that's the first thing, pick a theme and then put it into a three act structure. Now, let's jump to number three, which is how do you get published? Now, Christy Dickerson, like I said, self-published. So let's talk about that first and then we'll talk about traditional. Self-publishing, you need to pick a format, right? So Christy has chosen to make a hardback book. She could have easily, just as easily have chosen to do a paperback. She could have done an ebook. You know, maybe she wants to put it in an audiobook later on. You know, all of these things are things you need to think about first. Then you think, need to think about what platform you want to sell on. Do you want to your book to be on Amazon? Do you want it to be on Barnes and Noble? Do you want it to be on Kobo? Um, and then do you want it to be in physical stores? And then the third thing you need to think about is getting an editor. So as soon as you're done writing your book, you should get an editor to help you with some developmental edits. Then you need a copy editor to go through it and make sure it doesn't have typos or grammatical errors. Maybe you'd get a line edit. And then finally, it is ready to go. And I can tell you, no matter how many people you pay, they're gonna miss something. It just happens, especially when you read your own manuscript. I miss things all the time. And spell check is going to miss things too because some words can be spelled multiple ways or have different meanings. And so spell check may not catch that. Now, once you have done that for your traditional publishing um, or for your self-published, you might think about instead, hey, I really want someone to help me and just do the whole thing for me. And that's traditional publishing. Now with traditional publishing, it is a little different. You need to first find an agent. And when I say an agent, I'm talking about a literary agent. And the way you find an agent is you are going to start researching different literary agents just online or on Twitter, and they will tell you exactly what they want and what they're looking for. You can also look on Publishers Weekly or Publishers Lunch, and you can read about all the deals that are happening. And those, when you read about the deals that are happening, that will help give you some indication of what different literary agents are looking for and what they're selling, what they have experience in. At the same time, if they have maybe too many health and fitness authors, they may not be looking for another one. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind as well. Now, once you have a literary agent, they are going to either love your thing, sign you, take you on, and then start pushing your book out to all of the contacts they have in the industry with Random House or um, St. Martin's Press or whoever it is. And then one of them is going to buy your book. I'm being positive, actually. You know, it's possible <laughs> your book may not sell, but let's just pretend it's gonna sell. So once they sell, your book, they're going to have a contract. That contract is going to be sent over to you. Your literary agent does not get paid. I just want to make this really clear because in nonfiction right now, for some reason, there is a huge number of people offering to publish your book for twenty or $30,000 don't need to do that. You can either self-publish it on your own, and I do have an author channel, so definitely go over there and um, get help or just ask me. Um, but you can, when you sign with a literary agent, you don't pay them a dime. Your literary agent gets paid when you sign a contract with the publisher and then they get a percentage of your sales. Now, 
keep in mind, you do not need to pay your literary agent to read things for you. However, just like with self-publishing, you can get a developmental editor or a copy editor to proofread things before you send it to a literary agent because what you send to your literary agent, it's not their job to teach you how to read or clean up your manuscript. It's their job just to assess whether or not your idea and your books and your words and your personality and your platform are marketable. So definitely write a query letter. That query letter goes to the literary agent. You sign with your literary agent, then they sell your book to a traditional publisher and then you get a contract and then that's how they get paid. So those are the two methods, self or traditional. So let's move on to the fourth one, which is how to market and tie your book into your planner business. So hopefully when you were thinking about what to write, you would already been thinking about how to plug this into your planner business. Now, again, if I were to write, make a, in my example, a book about paying off my finances, I would definitely create a planner just for debt consolidation and budgeting and man time management of your finances. Now, th those have nothing to do typically with a traditional planner. So maybe you have some inserts if you have a traditional planner and you don't want to make a separate budget planner or maybe you make a budget planner notebook. Um, that is a great way to tie those two in. Another thing to think about when you think about marketing is if you have a traditional book, your traditional book, whatever contract you have with the publisher, they are going to have some money or some platforms or some ideas built into how they can help market your book for you. However, with non, I would say with nonfiction versus fiction, they are expecting you to come to the table with a pretty big platform already. So your social media platform, if you have three followers on Facebook and two followers on Twitter, and I'm obviously exaggerating here, you are not going to be as appealing as another author writing the same thing who has a hundred thousand followers. So things to think about, especially when you are an unknown entity, you know, if you start a blog, I would definitely think that's a great way to also build a platform is if you want to talk about finances, I would start a blog just about money and paying down debt. And then I would build an audience from there and then I would try to write a book. So Again, you don't have to do that. And if that's not something that you really feel you want to invest the time in, then maybe just go in to self-publishing instead of traditional publishing. All right, I hope that was helpful. So let's recap, what can you do to write your own book that's going to complement your planner business? We went through some examples. All of these examples were sort of, you had two options. You could do more of a traditional book like Laura Casey's, or you could do a hybrid like Christy Dickerson and Emily Lee did, where it kind of looks like a planner because it has a ribbon in it and it has spaces for you to write in. I can't even get this ribbon out. <laughs> or um, you can, go ahead and think about just making a planner journal notebook sort of thing and selling that out to kind of just validate and test your idea. The second thing we talked about is what to write about. So I said pick a theme and then put your book into a three act structure. And then the next thing we talked about was how to publish. You can do self publishing on your own or you can do traditional. And the last thing we talked about was how to market and tie this into your planner business. And hopefully you have a planner that directly corresponds with the subject material in your book or you've shown how your planner has helped you to organize things that you talked about in your book and you maybe could just create some inserts that go along with your traditional planner so go ahead and leave a comment below uh, for me on some book ideas that you have i'm really excited to learn if other people want to write a book it's not just me um, and if you have any questions about publishing i would love to help you all right, I hope everyone's having a great week and I'll see you guys later. Bye.